We have several Sooners that landed on watch lists. Speaking of linebacker and defense, we'll discuss that coming up next here on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, it's watch list season as we gear up for the 2024 college football season and several Oklahoma Sooners are going to be uh had their had their uh, they're going to be watched. They're going to be watched yes. a lot this fall. Uh and starting with Jackson Arnold who landed on the Maxwell Award watch list. Not surprising. I mean, 75 guys named to the list. Of course, you're going to include uh the starting quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners. Was it 75 for Maxwell? I know it was 75 for the Nagurski. Maybe yeah, I think it is like roughly or it's 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 a, a, it's a long list. It's a lot of It's dudes. a long <laughs> list that they'll narrow down, but I'm bullish on Jackson Arnold. I know that there are Oklahoma fans that want to see more out of him. I've, I've seen enough. The talent is there. The head is there. The intangibles are there. He's going to be somebody that's in contention for this award, especially if Oklahoma has success uh, throughout the season, like we think they're going to. All the talent is there for him to be a successful, a successful player. Uh, Oklahoma's had three players win the Maxwell in years past. Uh, Baker mm-hmm. Mayfield, uh, Jason White, and yep. Tommy McDonald all won the award. Uh, so dating back 70 years um, for the Maxwell. That was expected, right? You, you, the, especially all the lists, the players that we've seen on the list so far, majority of them are the ones that we expect. I, I'm waiting to see. I think the next one's probably coming up with like the Bolitnikoff and all of those will probably have their watch list and stuff coming down the line. Those are the ones I'm truly intrigued to see if we get snubbed on or whatnot. But the good thing is, is that the ones that we were supposed to be on were on. That yeah. was the most important thing to me. And it's like I said, it's watch list. The, the list is long, hence why it's called a watch list. But the fact that they recognize that, hey, these are dudes that you need to keep your eyes on and we'll see what the season turns out. Then we'll see if they end up as finalists. But I'm happy at the fact that at least we didn't get disrespected on these watch lists because last year, not make went getting on the Thorpe finalists as well as the, um, the Blitnikoff finalists. I'm not a Blitnikoff, the um, oh linebacker one. Butkus. Give it to me. Butkus. The Butkus one. That still irks me to this moment. Yeah, so, you know, Billy Bowman, Danny Setzman, both named to the Nagurski. Uh, Bowman named to the Thorpe. I love the Nagurski Award just because mm-hmm. uh, up until this last year, the last time a defensive back had won the Nagurski was Derek Strait back in 2004. Sure was. And prior to that, the last safety, uh, Xavier Watts from Notre Dame won it in 2023. The last safety to have won the award was Roy Williams in 2001. It's It's been a, a linebacker defensive lineman award for much of its existence, but yeah. you have two Sooners that have won the award. And then when you look at the Thorpe, there's only one other school that has won as many as Oklahoma. It's three Thorpe awards. And that is the LSU Tigers, quote unquote, DBU, DBU. right? Right. Oklahoma with Ricky Dixon and Roy Williams and Derek Strait. I think we've got a, if Billy Bowman can bring home the Thorpe this year, that put them as to number one in Thorpe award winning seasons. So with that Thorpe, what do you think Billy needs to do in order to win it? Because to me, I think the one thing in my personal opinion, he needs to do in which I, this is the reason why he wasn't on it last year is he may need to stop going for the big hit and actually wrap up more because yep. he missed a lot of tackles, right? I think he had like 22 missed tackles last season, 20 the year before, well, 20, 20 last year, 22 the year before that. And so it's decreasing, which is a good thing, but Billy's also known for hitting, getting that pop, right? That smack, hit the ball, make it fly in the air, get the interception. That's type JT thing. Sanders from Texas. Right. Right. So I guess to me, that's the one thing I think he needs to focus on is making sure he gets the tackles. What do you think he needs to do in order to win that award? Yeah. I think if you, if you have fewer missed tackles, give up fewer big plays as a secondary, as a whole, you know, you don't have to have six interceptions to go win the Thorpe. You just have to be a little bit more consistent in the the small things. Um, and I, and I think he will, that's part of the reason he came back, you know, right. is to one, not only compete for an sec title, not only to go compete for a national title, but it's just to get better and improve. And that's one area which he needs to improve. And, and several other players on the team need to improve in their, their tackling ability. But if he does that and he makes the plays that he's supposed to make, and then 
adds on top of it four or five interceptions with a couple of interception in return for touchdowns, then I think he'll put himself right in the mix for that at the end of the season. You know, it, it's it's always going to be hard because you're asking a group of people to watch every college football game that happens throughout a year. Well, the right. watch list kind of narrows it down and helps you understand, okay, who are the guys we really need to keep an eye on? Well, now that Billy Bowman kind of got snubbed from it last year and is on the watch list this year, it, I think it's going to give him a better opportunity. You kind of see the same thing happen in pro sports, right? Where a dude has a, a really, really good year. It's a breakout season, but because not enough people know about him, he doesn't get pro ball accolades or all pro consideration. Mm -hmm. It's not until that next year when everybody realizes, oh man, we kind of missed on this guy that they start throwing, you know, the accolades at him, the, the praise and things like that. And he starts getting more of that recognition. Well, Billy Bowman had his breakout year last year, much like several other Sooners, Danny Stutzman, Nick Anderson, a bunch of guys. Well, now going into 2024, if Oklahoma has success, all those guys are going to receive a lot of praise nationally because they're more well-known commodities now. No, I agree with you on that. And so hitting that watch list, like you said, it, it's going to be now people are going to pay attention to the little things that they're going to do. Same thing with Danny Stutzman, right? But for Billy, I'm, he, he says he wants to outdo his interception return for touchdowns this year. So he had three last year. His goal is four. I mean, yeah. if he does do four and pick sixes, I mean, you, you kind of got to like at least make him a finalist at that point, right? Because right? I ain't nobody else going to do that many. But, you know, I guess for, for that, the only concern I would have is I know that in order to do that, you're going to have to read plays fast and have to uh, jump routes. Just don't lead to no big plays happening behind you. But at the same yeah. time, too, he had over 700 snaps last season, right? 781 to be exact. I don't see him playing that many snaps next season, which will probably be a good thing for not only him, but also the team and getting some of the younger players in. I mean, him and Peyton Bowen could possibly switch out or whatnot. So you'll see more Peyton along with uh, Robert Spears Jennings, who looks, I mean, he's almost 220 pounds in size with massive safety, right? You love to have a safety that's about 6'1", 6'2", 220. If he does that, right, if he, he plays less snaps and he's able to still get those numbers, he he he, he should be a shoe in to get that award. Yeah, and, and I, you also got to wonder, will teams throw at him, you know? Yep. They did that to Woody last year. <laughs> right. You know, like, this is one of those things, like, if, if you've got all this tape now on Bowman and, and his ability to go pick off passes – I think offensive coordinators and quarterbacks are going to be a little less likely to throw his direction because they know what he's capable of. But, uh, you know, teams will still try him and fail doing so. But I think that'll play into it, too. A lot of it is kind of luck. You know, it's right time, right place or right place, mm -hmm. right time, as the saying goes. So, uh, you know, whether he replicates those numbers or not, I think he could still end up a finalist, even if he only has like, you know, three or four interceptions. But again, shores up the little things, does all makes all the plays he's supposed to make, you know, with, with a guy like Stutzman, you know, I could see him, you know, being a finalist for a lot of awards this year because he is so important to Oklahoma's defense. I think the other one that kind of surprised me was Branson Hickman showing up on the outland trophy, uh, watch yeah. this, you know, indicating to me that he's going to be Oklahoma's starting center and two, he's going to be really good. He was really good at SMU. And so I don't think there's any reason to not believe that he'll continue to be really, really good. I hundred percent agree. That's the one thing that jumped out to me too, seeing that, yeah, he's getting that recognition early. So they're the committee's looking at it saying, Hey, he was already very highly graded when he was at SMU. He did pretty well there. Right. Very, like I said, very highly graded. He's considered one of the top graded uh, uh, centers coming into next season in the sec. And so, yeah, granted he played at SMU, but and some you had a pretty solid season last year. And with that experience and that many snaps, it's funny. I was looking through some of the snaps that's coming through next season, man. We got, we don't have very many players that's going to potentially play a lot that have less than 300 snaps to their career. It's a little bit more experience. The problem is they don't have that local chemistry, right? They're, they haven't played together. Once that happens, different ball game. But yeah, the good thing is we've got guys with over 300 snaps ready to go in and play in the games. Well, and I think they've got, I mean, four of their five starters probably figured out. And if not, at least three of their five starters figured out. And so that gives you yeah, a little interior bit. Interior's done. Yeah. 
And so that gives you a little bit more ability to find that cohesion. Um, so I, th I think they'll figure it out again, not concerned about the offensive line and, and having an experienced player like Branson, Branson Hickman kind of lead the way is going to help a lot. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Go check it out over there. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. Go join the Locked On Sooners Insider Program where we do Q&As with you. We talk throughout the week. I got one guy that we're just chatting it up on a regular basis, just talking to Oklahoma football over there in the Insider Program by texting SEC 2024 to 405-817-6711. You get 14 days free, plus you get 25% off your first month after the free trial period. Again, text SEC 2024 to 405-817-6711. Follow the show on all the social medias at Locked On Sooners. Follow Jay at Unfair Sports, myself at John Nine Williams. Uh, we'll continue to cover fall camp all summer long, all August as we get ready for week one against Temple. There's going to be a lot of position battle talk as well as some position previews, talking through some of the top storylines with each position group as we go. So again, make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. But for Jay Smith, I'm John Williams. We'll catch you next time. Boomer! Sooner.